This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in February 2006. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Chapter 15. We judged that three nights more would fetch us to Cairo, at the bottom of Illinois, where the Ohio River comes in, and that was what we was after. We would sell the raft and get on a steamboat, and go way up the Ohio amongst the free states, and then be out of trouble. Well, the second night a fog begun to come on, and we made for a towhead to tie to, for it wouldn't do to try to run in a fog, but when I paddled ahead in the canoe with a line to make fast, there weren't anything but little saplings to tie to. I passed a line around one of them, right on the edge of the cut bank, but there was a stiff current, and the raft come booming down so lively, she tore it out by the roots, and away she went. I see the fog closing down, and it made me so sick and scared I couldn't budge for most a half a minute, it seemed to me. And then there weren't no raft in sight. You couldn't see twenty yards. I jumped into the canoe and run back to the stern, and grabbed the paddle and set her back stroke. But she didn't come. I was in such a hurry I hadn't untied her. I got up and tried to untie her, but I was so excited my hands shook so I couldn't hardly do anything with them. As soon as I got started, I took out after the raft, hot and heavy, right down the towhead. That was all right as far as it went, but the towhead weren't sixty yards long, and the minute I flew by the foot of it, I shot out into the solid white fog, and had no more idea which way I was going than a dead man. Thinks I, it won't do to paddle. First I know I'll run into the bank or a towhead or something. I got to set still and float, and yet it's mighty fidgety business to have to hold your hand still at such a time. I whooped and listened. Away down there somewheres I hears a small whoop, and up comes my spirits. I went tearing after it, listening sharp to hear it again. The next time it come I see I weren't heading for it, but heading away to the right of it. And the next time I was heading away to the left of it, and not gaining on it much either, for I was flying around, this way and that and the other, but it was going straight ahead all the time. I did wish the fool would think to beat a tin pan and beat it all the time, but he never did, and it was the still places between the whoops that was making the trouble for me. Well, I fought along, and directly I hears the whoop behind me. I was tangled good now. That was somebody else's whoop, or else I was turned around. I throwed the paddle down. I hear the whoop again. It was behind me yet, but in a different place. It kept coming and kept changing its place, and I kept answering, till by and by it was in front of me again, and I know the current had swung the canoe's head downstream, and I was all right if that was Jim, not some other raftsman hollering. I couldn't tell nothing about voices in a fog, for nothing don't look natural nor sound natural in a fog. The whooping went on, and in about a minute I come a-booming down on a cut bank, with smoky ghosts of big trees on it, and the current throw me off to the left and shot by, amongst a lot of snags that fairly roared, the current was tearing by them so swift. In another second or two it was solid white and still again. I sat perfectly still then, listening to my heart thump, and I reckon I didn't draw a breath while it thumped a hundred. I just give up then. I knowed what the matter was. That cut bank was an island, and Jim had gone down the other side of it. It warn't no towhead that you could float by in ten minutes. It had the big timber of a regular island. It might be five or six miles long, and more than half a mile wide. I kept quiet with my ears cocked, about fifteen minutes, I reckon. I was floating along, of course, four or five miles an hour, but you don't ever think of that. No, you feel like you were laying dead still on the water, and if a little glimpse of a snag slips by, you don't think to yourself how fast you're going, but you catch your breath and think, my, how that snag's tearing along. If you think it ain't dismal and lonesome out in a fog that way by yourself in the night, you try it once. You'll see. Next, for about a half an hour, I whoops now and then. At last I hears the answer a long ways off, and tries to follow it but I couldn't do it, and directly I judged I'd got into a nest of towheads, for I had little dim glimpses of them on both sides of me, 
sometimes just a narrow channel between, and some that I couldn't see I knowed was there because I'd hear the wash of the current against the old dead brush and trash that hung over the banks. Well, I weren't long losing the whoops now amongst the towheads, and I only tried to chase them a little while anyway, because it was worse than chasing a jack-o'-lantern. You never know to sound dodge around so, and swap places so quick and so much. I had to claw away from the bank pretty lively four or five times, to keep from knocking the islands out of the river, and so I judged the raft must be buttoned into the bank every now and then, or else it would get further ahead and clear out of hearing. It was floating a little faster than what I was. Well, I seemed to be in the open river again by and by, but I couldn't hear no sign of a whoop nowheres. I reckon Jim had fetched up on a snag, maybe, and it was all up with him. I was good and tired, so I laid down in the canoe and said I wouldn't bother no more. I didn't want to go to sleep, of course, but I was so sleepy I couldn't help it. So I thought I would take just one little cat nap. But I reckon it was more than a cat nap, for when I waked up the stars was shining bright, the fog was all gone, and I was spinning down a big bend, stern first. First I didn't know where I was. I thought I was dreaming. When things began to come back to me, they seemed to come up dim out of last week. It was a monstrous big river here, with the tallest and the thickest kind of timber on both banks, just a solid wall, as well as I could see by the stars. I looked away downstream and seen a black speck on the water. I took after it, but when I got to it, it warn't nothing but a couple of saw logs made fast together. Then I see another speck and chased that, then another, and this time I was right. It was the raft. When I got to it, Jim was sitting there with his head down between his knees, asleep, with his right arm hanging over the steering oar. The other oar was smashed off, and the raft was littered up with leaves and branches and dirt. So she'd had a rough time. I made fast and laid down under Jim's nose on the raft and began to gap and stretch my fists out against Jim and says, Hello, Jim, have I been asleep? Why didn't you stir me up? Good gracious, is that you, Huck? And you ain't dead? You ain't drowned you's back again? It's too good for true, honey, it's too good for true. Let me look at you, child, let me feel of you. No, you ain't dead. You's back again. Live and sound, just the same old Huck. The same old Huck, thanks to goodness. What's the matter with you, Jim? You been a drinkin? Drinkin? Has I been a drinkin? Has I had a chance to be a drinkin? Well, then, what makes you talk so wild? How does I talk wild? How? Why, hain't you been talkin' about my comin' back and all that as if I'd been gone away? Huck, Huck Finn, you look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. Hain't you been gone away? Gone away? Why, what in the nation do you mean? I hain't been gone anywheres. Where would I go to? Well, looky here, boss. Day something wrong, day is. Is I me, or who is I? Is I here, or where is I? Now, dat's what I wants to know. Well, I think you're here plain enough, but I think you're a tangle-headed old fool, Jim. I is, is I? Well, you answer me this. Didn't you tow out the line in the canoe for to make fast to the towhead? No, I didn't. What towhead? I ain't seen no towhead. You ain't seen no towhead? Looky here. Didn't the line pull loose and the raft go a humming down the river and leave you in the canoe behind in the fog? What fog? Why, the fog. The fog that's been around all night. And didn't you whoop and didn't I whoop? Till we got mixed up into islands, but one of us got lost, and the other one was just as good as lost, case he didn't know where he was. And didn't I bust up again a lot of dem islands, and have a terrible time, and most get drownded? Now ain't that so, boss? Ain't it so? You answer me dat. Well, this is too many for me, Jim. I hain't seen no fog, nor no islands, nor no troubles, nor nothing. I've been sitting here talking with you all night till you went to sleep about ten minutes ago. And I reckon I done the same. You couldn't have got drunk in that time, so of course you've been dreaming. Dad, fetch it. How was I gwine to dream all that in ten minutes? Well, hang it all. You did dream it, because there didn't any of it happen. But, Huck, it's all just as plain to me as... It don't make no difference how plain it is. There ain't nothing in it. I know, because I've been here all the time. 
Jim didn't say nothing for about five minutes, but set there studying over it. Then he says, Well, then, I reckon I did dream it, Huck. But dog my cats if it ain't the powerfulest dream I ever see. And I hain't ever had no dream before that's tie me like this one. Oh, well, that's all right, because a dream does tire a body like everything sometimes. But this one was a staving dream. Tell me all about it, Jim. So Jim went to work and told me the whole thing right through, just as it happened, only he painted it up considerable. Then he said he must start in and interpret it, because it was sent for a warning. He said the first towhead stood for a man that would try to do us some good, but the current was another man that would get us away from him. The whoops was warnings that would come to us every now and then, and if we didn't try hard to make out to understand them, they'd just take us into bad luck, instead of keeping us out of it. The lot of towheads was troubles we was going to get into with quarrelsome people, and all kinds of mean folks, but if we minded our business and didn't talk back and aggravate them, we would pull through and get out of the fog and into the big clear river, which was the free states, and wouldn't have no more trouble. It had clouded up pretty dark just after I got on to the raft, but it was clearing up again now. Oh, well, that's all interpreted well enough as far as it goes, Jim, I says. But what does these things stand for? It was the leaves and rubbish on the raft and the smashed oar. You could see them first rate now. Jim looked at the trash and then looked at me and back at the trash again. He had got the dream fixed so strong in his head that he couldn't seem to shake it loose and get the facts back into its place again right away. But when he did get the thing straightened around, he looked at me steady without ever smiling and says, What do they stand for? I's gwine to tell you. When I got all wore out with work and with calling for you and went to sleep, my heart was most broke because you was lost, and I didn't care no more what become of me and de raff. And when I wake up and find you back again, all safe and sound, de tears come, and I could have got down on my knees and kissed your foot, I was so thankful. And all you was thinking about was how you could make a fool of old Jim with a lie. That truck is trash, and trash is what people is that puts dirt on de head of their friends and makes em ashamed. Then he got up and walked to the wigwam and went in there without saying anything but that. But that was enough. It made me feel so mean, I could almost kiss his foot to get him to take it back. It was fifteen minutes before I could work myself up to go and humble myself to a nigger, but I done it, and I weren't ever sorry for it afterwards, neither. I didn't do him no more mean tricks, and I wouldn't have done that one if I'd have known it would make him feel that way. End of chapter 15